What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender rendering tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the different kinds of lighting you can add in order to render your scenes inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I've wanted to create this video for a while, uh, really this series for a while, to talk through all the different basics of working through creating great renderings inside of Blender. And so one of the things that you need to be aware of when you're working with rendering is I would say there's probably four technical aspects you really need to pay attention to in order to create realistic renderings. So there's your lighting, there's your materials, there's your camera settings, and your composition. And so in this first video, I wanted to talk through uh, working with lighting inside of Blender. So the different kinds of lights that are, that are available and how you can use them to create different effects. And then from there, we'll kind of build into the other properties. And then we'll talk about maybe some different scenes or something like that that we can create. And so the first thing I wanted to do was talk you through some of the different lighting options that you have inside of Blender. And so to start off, what we're gonna do is I've got a very simple scene where I've just got some simple shapes in here. Um, this was formerly a cube, and then I deleted the edge off of here um, just to give our light something to kind of bounce off of and be contained in here. Um, so you can create this scene really easily. Then I've applied a wood material to the base right here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna start off by going into rendered mode. So in our viewport shading, click on rendered mode. And so you'll notice that right now this is very dim. And the reason that it's very dim is because there's no lighting, there's no artificial lighting sources contained in this, uh, in this scene right now. So we're gonna go ahead and add a couple and then look at our options. So to start off, um, we're in object mode. I'm just gonna do a shift A, and then I'm gonna go down to light. And so what you're gonna notice about this is you will probably have four options in here for lighting. I've got a few more down below um, that I downloaded from Blender Marketplace, but we're gonna focus on these four kinds of lighting plus a couple more in this video. So to start off, let's go ahead and add a point light. And so you can see how when you add a point light, it's gonna place a point light um, where your 3D cursor is located. And then I'm just going to move this up move it back a little bit, then I'm gonna move it across. So that it's kind of casting light on this cube right now. And so the first thing you're gonna notice when you add a point light is the result you're getting isn't very good. Um, it's very dim. And so the reason for that is because your lighting settings are set so that your light um, isn't emitting a lot of light. And so the first thing we need to do is take a look at the settings and make this light brighter. This will be the case for most of the kinds of lights inside of Blender. But the way that you can do that is you can select that, then come over here and click on the little light bulb in order to see your lighting settings inside of Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and close my preview for right now. And so this is in Blender 2.82. This may look a little bit different depending on the version that you're working with, but the settings are all kind of the same. Um, and so you're gonna notice when you select this light, you're gonna get options under light for things that you can change. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the brightness. So let's take the power and take it up to 100 instead of to 10. And so one way to think about these is to think about light bulbs as kind of a base because that's something we all use. Um, and think about the brightness that a light bulb would emit and then kind of align with that real world value when you're adding your lights in your scene. One thing to note about this is generally speaking, if you're not getting enough light, you don't wanna just jam this way up um, because your rendering software is actually doing real world uh, calculations in here. And you don't wanna crank these up to something super unrealistic because if you have unrealistic inputs, you're gonna get unrealistic results. And so notice how we can adjust the power of this light. That's gonna adjust how much light is actually emitted by this object. So notice as I do this, things like my shadows get more, more pronounced based on what we change in here. Um, but let's go ahead and take this back down to 100 for right now. So you can adjust the power in here. You can also adjust the color of the light emitted. So you can just click on color and then you can actually click and drag this in order to emit different colors of light. So you can see how um, you could emit like a blue light. Um, you can emit a yellow light. You can really kind of adjust this based on what you're trying to do. So you can adjust this using the RGB values as well. So you can adjust the colors 
of your light. Um, specular in general, you're just going to kind of leave that as is. Um, if you do anything less than one, it's going to give you an unrealistic result. You can use this to adjust like how much light is being bounced off of different surfaces and stuff. But generally speaking, especially um, if you go into the Blender manual, they recommend leaving that at one for the most photorealistic results. And then radius is going to be the size of the point that's emitting the light. And that's really going to become evident. That's It's going to affect how much light is bouncing off of these surfaces. But a good way to look at this is let's say that I was to move this over and I was to adjust this material real quick. And we'll just apply a different material to it just so we can kind of look at this. But let's say I was to take the roughness down to zero just for a second. So what that means is that means your surface doesn't scatter the light. You really get a true reflection of the rays. It's not realistic, but it gives you an idea what this does. Well now, if I was to adjust my point light, so I'm gonna tab back out of edit mode, go back into my lighting settings, you can see how the radius of your light is adjusting based on the setting. So this is going to affect the radius of your light emitter in here. And so for this one in particular, I don't believe that makes anything brighter. Uh, let me bounce over to cycles real quick to see. Um, but I don't believe that the size of this light affects the amount that's emitted like it will with an emitter a little bit later. It more but the larger you make this, the softer your shadows are going to be. So if I was to take this and make it like five, that's probably a little bit too big. If I was to make this maybe like two, you're gonna get much softer shadows coming off of this cube than you would if you were to leave this at like 0.25. So notice if I make the size of this smaller, my shadows are more pronounced over here. So just something to kind of be aware of. Um, is you can use the radius of your light in order to adjust the hardness or softness of your shadows. So let's go ahead and go back to EV for right now. We may jump back into cycles in a little bit. But that's kind of an overview of the point light. You can also turn on and off if it's casting shadows or not. So if you want this to just add um, some lighting to your scene but not necessarily drive the shadows, like if you need to brighten up a corner or something like that, you can turn off the shadows um, in these settings. There's some other things in here as well, but this be a good start for right now. So now let's take a look at the next kind of light you can add, which is a spotlight. And so if we go into, if we do a shift A and we add a spotlight and let's go ahead and move this up. We'll move it back just a little bit. And we'll kind of adjust it so it's pointing in this direction. I'm also going to turn off my point light. So a spotlight unlike a point light is a light that actually has a direction associated with it. And let's go ahead and run this up to 100 for right now. We may go ahead and bump that up to maybe like 250. And so if you look at this light, you can see how while the last light, it's just a point in space that emits light in every direction. Well, this light actually has a direction associated with it. So what you're gonna notice is as I move this around, that light is casting shadows um, and casting light in this direction right here. So you're not getting any light applied behind it. Um, you're literally getting light applied forward instead. And so the spotlight has the same general settings that we talked about before. So you can add like colors or other things like that, but then it also has some other settings as well. So for example, you can adjust the angle at which that light is being emitted from this base point. So notice how the larger your angle, the wider this light is being cast. So you can adjust that. And notice again that in addition, the radius of your light is going to affect how strong or how defined your shadows are on the backside of your objects. You can adjust all of those over here. And then your blend is going to adjust how much uh, how much your light falls off or how defined this edge is between where your spotlight is hitting a surface and not. So if you want kind of a softer transition, you can turn your blend up. Um, otherwise, you can leave that turned down. So that's kind of, that's a spotlight, which you can use in order to cast light in a direction. So and then the other interior artificial light that I use a lot of, and I'm gonna go back in here and reapply this material. So we'll assign this material, there we go is an area light. And so I'm gonna do a shift A in object mode and add an area light over here. I'm gonna move this across. I'm gonna move it up. 
and I'm going to move it over just a little bit and then I'll rotate it on the Y axis. And so this is kind of like a spotlight, but it's a spotlight where instead of having a point of light, what you have is an area of light that's casting your light. And so basically what this means is when we added this object, what it did is it added a one meter by one meter square um, of, it added it one meter by one meter square and every um, piece of this area is emitting light. So in this situation, this is kind of like a spotlight, but bigger. So what this is doing is this is basically um, anywhere this area is, is going to emit your light and it's going to have a direction associated with it, kind of like the spotlight. And so for this one, you can adjust this using the scale tool. So if I was to scale this on the Y axis, for example, this is going to spread out the area that's light, that light's being emitted. So for this one, for example, notice that as I move this, if I scale it back down, my light emission is being affected by the size of this area. So you can use this to create longer, more narrow lights if you want to. So um, basically things, and a lot of people use these in order to, as part of like a three point lighting setup, kind of like you would in photography. So they'll have multiple different versions of this so you don't get these like ultra pronounced shadows. But like for example, you could add multiple different area lights like this and you could have them shining on this object and able to, uh, in order to create something that's more lit up that doesn't have like the super pronounced shadows and then a dark side on the other side. So a lot of the time people will use multiple different area lights in order to create something like a studio setup or something like that so that they can have better lighting inside of the renderings. So those are your three basic interior artificial lights that you may use for your interior lighting. Um, another thing you might do if you're creating an exterior light is you might add a sun. And so in order to add a sun, you can do a shift A and note that right here, there's an option for a sun. And so the sun works a little bit differently in the sense that it casts light in a direction, but instead of it coming from this point right here, it's basically coming from like an infinite point off in the distance. So for example, notice how if I adjust this and point this in a different direction, uh, my shadows are adjusting. So I can adjust the direction that my sunlight is facing, but it's going to come from infinitely off into the distance over here. And so this is much better for lighting big scenes or outdoor scenes or other things like that. So you could probably use it in order to create a light coming through a window as well. Um, but same kind of settings, right? You can adjust your strength. I believe this is in watts per square foot or square, square meter, something like that. You can adjust the strength in order to get a brighter or dimmer result. So you can generate that exterior light using the sun. And then there's two other kinds of lights that I wanna talk about just a little bit. Um, I don't wanna to get too far into them for right now. The first is an emitter. And so an emitter is interesting in the sense that an emitter isn't actually a light, it's a material. And it's a material you can apply to an object. And so let's go into our shading section real quick. Let's put this on rendered, but let's add a new material. And instead of having the principled BSDF down here, let's delete that out. Let's do a shift A and let's add an emission node. So what an emission node is gonna do is an emission node is going to make your object emit light. And so notice how I don't have a ton of settings in here. I can adjust my color, then I can adjust my strength. So I can set this up to like 100 or something like that. And one thing you're gonna note about this when you do this is the emitter is emitting light, but if you're in Eevee, um, this isn't actually going to light any of the other materials, right? Because this isn't actually calculating the way the rays are bouncing in here. And so if you want to see the light affecting your other objects, you need to render this in cycles. And notice how as soon as I render this in cycles, my result gets a lot different, right? So now my sphere that I've applied this emissive material to is emitting light that's affecting the other objects in my scene. And so notice how this will adjust. If I move my object, it will also adjust if I uh, adjust the size of my object. And the reason for that is because basically every piece of this area right here is affecting my scene. So if I scale this down, 
like this down to a little point, you're going to notice I'm getting less light in my scene. Well, the reason for that is because there's less surface area and the actual material applied to this is what's emitting that light. There's some really interesting things you can do with this, which we may talk about in a future video, but just know that you can apply an emissive material and then use that to light your scene to get different results as well. And then the last kind of lighting I want to talk about, and I'm just going to talk about this a little bit because it's really kind of a different kind of video, is you can also add an HDRI image. And uh, you may have used HDRI images to add backgrounds in the past. Well, those HDRI images also have lighting information associated with them. And so you can go to different websites in order to do this. So uh, a lot of people go to HDRI Haven. That is an excellent website um, for downloading different HDRIs. But they're basically spherical images that you can add to Blender. And what they do is they actually have lighting information associated with them. So you can take these, uh, these kind of backgrounds and bring them in and you can use them to light your scene. And so for example, in order to do that, I could just add a, let's see, we're gonna go into world. We're gonna add an environment texture shader. Notice that it's pink right now because there's not anything actually linked in here yet. And I'm just gonna open an HDRI file. So for example, we could open this file right here. And I'll go ahead and turn my sphere off for a second. But notice how um, my environment is actually lighting my scene um, in this situation. And so if I was to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node, which I don't want to get into too much in this video, um, but just know that I could come in here and I could adjust the rotation of this image. And notice how as I adjust the rotation of this image, and let's go ahead and drop this into Eevee real quick, but notice how as I adjust the rotation of this image, the lighting in my scene is adjusting as well. That's because if you look at this HDRI image, the lighting information in here as we rotate it is being used to calculate the lighting in my scene. So you can also use an HDRI image in order to light your scene as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I think in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about materials and how you can start setting those up to create more realistic results inside of your renderings. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this. If you have any questions about it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.